let's introduce you to the Cable Scout TV90E. This comes in a nice shoulder bag <coughs> with tough water resistant fabric and inside this kit you will find an alligator clip um, adapter cord that can be obviously quick connected to the unit for testing. There is a two meter quick connect uh, F to F adapter cord, 75 ohms. <coughs> we have a BNC adapter for testing uh, CCTV type cabling perhaps. There is a vehicle power adapter with a connector to go in there. I'll show you that in a, in a short while. There is another shoulder strap for the unit itself with quick connect buckles to go onto the metal pins in the unit itself. We have a Comscope SVO3 test adapter for getting into the test ports on patch uh, panels and splitters. And in here we have a 12 volt AC adapter with uh, global uh, universal input and adapters. So in this pocket at the front we have the main unit itself. Let's get rid of the bag. There's a quick reference card which will give you the basic instructions on how to connect it up and get it going because the full instructions are actually held on the unit itself behind the question mark button here. And the specifications on the back and our contact details are on the back as well if you need to get in touch with us. This is actually a CS90 but to all intents and purposes they're the same. Power it on with a very short press on this button here and uh, then you immediately see a display. At the moment we don't have any uh, test signal or test cable connected so let's hook one up using the quick connect cable and we can see something happening both down here and up here. So what we have is an overview trace and a detail trace. Starts up in the overview trace and you can see a, a window highlighted in this area here. That represents what you can see in the upper trace. I can zoom out using the down arrow and you notice the window gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it encompasses the entire trace if you want. But if you want to look at only at detail you can remain zoomed in. <coughs> so what's happening with this cable? What we can do on this machine we can switch to the upper trace and I can move the cursor then on the detail for instance that event there and place a marker and then to quickly move to the end of the cable, if I switch back to the other window and move the window of interest over to the, uh, the detail here, I can then switch back to the upper trace and measure a distance between those two events of 90, 95 meters. But am I sure that this is correct for the cable that I'm talking about? Well, I can check that I'm using RG59, which in this case is correct. But if I was using a different type of cable, I use this button to access the cable library. And I can choose a multitude of different types of cable from this. If I wanted to, I can create a new cable. All I need to know is the name, ideally the loss per unit length, in this case decibels per 100 meters at about 500 megahertz, and the velocity of propagation. And then you can save that within the, within the library. You can save this library to the SD card, which is supplied in the unit up here, or to a USB drive. And note this is where the 12 volt power hides as well. It's under this sort of weatherproof cover, keeps the dirt and the dust out. But I'm going to stick with RG59 for now. So here I have a trace. I've made a measurement. I've got a distance to it. I can save the actual trace to the, di to the uh, memory card. I can choose to save to S SD or USB if there's a USB connected in there. I can either save what's currently on the screen or the full trace. The full trace being something which is the whole extent of the, of the way that the machine can measure. I can give the file a test a name 
In this case, it'll be test with the time and date. That's usually enough. But um, if you wanted to, you can actually go into here and you can edit using the on-screen keyboard to uh, save the file. We have a menu which includes the basic settings for the unit. So screen brightness we think is the one you're going to access most often. We got it, uh, it can be quite low for use indoors or it can go very bright for outdoors. But just beware that when you're using high brightness, obviously it's going to eat the battery a little bit more uh, rapidly. <coughs> we also have a, a, a darker mode, for, again for use more restful at night, less strain on the eyes. And then normally the unit will start up in automatic mode. Um, if you have made manual changes to the uh, basic parameters of test, then you can get back into auto mode by using this option here. And then the other test, uh, you've got the test type of whether it's a live trace or just an intermittent showing changes over time. Um, an intermittent trace would be something like this, where you're looking at the, uh, the cable and you're looking for something which is uh, changing uh, occasionally within that cable. So it builds up like a map of what is happening within the cable and you can actually look for changes perhaps there's some of some events which happen when the wind is blowing and a cable is blowing in the wind or a tree is rubbing against a, a damaged cable so you can actually get this sort of um, build up of something like this here so that's intermittent capture i'll go back to live trace we have a, a screen backlight timeout this is the time it takes before it dims the backlight quite a lot to save more power there is a power off time which is how long it waits before you've pressed the button before it switches the unit off then you can change the basic units from feet meters or nanoseconds and then you've got velocity of propagation between a simple factor a percentage meters per microsecond or feet per microsecond and then there's a dozen languages to choose from in the user interface with the about device we've got the model type the serial number the current firmware etc and inside that menu if you press to the right this is where you can get the option to update if you've placed uh, files onto the SD card. Information about the hardware version. The current battery status. This is a brand new unit. And the time and date, which is best set at the beginning, because obviously that is tagged to all the files you're working with. So it's great to be able to tie the files on the unit with the actual jobs that you've been doing through the week when you come to do reports. Let's show you how we use the cable library. Within the cable library, I can actually scroll through this list looking for the type of cable that I have. If it's not there, and I can't find the particular type that I, I use within my company, I can actually add a new type by using the plus key. I can go into the cable name and I can use the on-screen uh, keyboard to edit that name I will then enter using the cursor keys the loss per unit length where we actually take the estimate of decibels loss at 500 megahertz per 100 meters and then I will enter the specified velocity of propagation. Both these figures are normally available from the manufacturer's data sheet. I'll leave this on RG59 which is what I'm actually using at the moment. When I've taken a trace and I've marked some information on it, so I can see here that I have a, uh, an impedance mismatch or a splice at this point here, which is 95 meters from the start of the cable. I placed earlier a marker at the, at the connection point between the, my patch lead and the, uh, the actual test cable then uh, I can turn that marker off and instead if I wanted to I can then place a marker here at the end and use that as a reference to uh, go back to this point of interest where I believe there's a there's a variable fault on the cable. That point there is 7.6 meters from where the cursor is currently marking the end of the cable. If I want to save this trace to uh, the SD card for later analysis um, I can simply press that button and then I can press save. I can choose whether I'm going to save it to the SD. If there's a USB drive, I can choose that as well. Um, whether I choose just the what's on the display or do a full trace, 
a full trace allows you to obviously do further analysis outside this visual uh, visible region um, afterwards. Choose the file name. In this case, I'll just stick with the default name. And that is now saved to the SD card. Likewise, I can actually load in um, some previous traces if I wanted. So they say I chose this one, I can load that in and it'll show me what I, what I had on the screen at the time. The same settings and everything. But in this case, I will stick with my, my current display. Okay, manual mode. So at the moment we have uh, a gain setting, a pulse width, a filter setting and a velocity of propagation all set automatically. If I wish to change these to uh, any particular value, I can press this button here, which at the moment shows you the sort of gain icon, the typical volume wedge. That takes me automatically to the upper trace. It automatically highlights that gain value, and then I can use the up and down arrows on the screen to adjust to show more or less these events at the end of the cable. If I press this button again, I will then be adjusting the pulse width. So I can go up to 5 nanoseconds or even 25 nanoseconds. Now in this case, obviously 25 nanoseconds swamps because I've got a manually adjusted gain and it also overlaps uh, multiple events. The third option is filtering. In this case, it's set to 8. And I think that normally 2, especially on shorter cables, is more than adequate. And it'll actually show you these intermittent events much more readily such as this one here where the cursor is. So when you're doing intermittent testing, it may be good to even turn that <coughs> off. So no filtering, it's just, well, to say there's no filtering, it's just the fastest update rate. There is actually filtering. The fourth option on this menu is obviously the velocity of propagation. So if, for instance, you have a known length of cable, but you do not know its velocity of propagation, you can use this to measure the velocity of propagation by saying that I believe this event here, so if I move my cursor to the end, and then if I accept that my patch lead is two meters long, I want this to actually read 102. So in that case, I need <coughs> to increase my velocity of propagation a few, a few notches. And if I do it by single button presses, you can see that I'm going up with one thousandth to get the, veloc the, the velocity of propagation I want. So in this case, my test cable down here, I believe, is 0.833. Every single screen within the uh, product has a context-sensitive help. So on this screen, for instance, the most complicated screen of the lot, you can see that we actually have a description of what all the icons are, what the buttons do throughout the screen. And it talks about whether you're using the cursor keys in overview mode or detail mode, and the fact that the center button is the one which you use to toggle between the two. And to remove this, the help from the screen, press the button again. And that is available for every screen. So for instance, in settings, it'll remind you what each of the options are. So in the cable library, we have the instructions for the cable library. In the file save menu, we have the options for file save. Because I've been changing values, this is now in manual mode. If I wanted to go back to auto, reminder, so within the settings menu, just choose auto and return. We're now back to auto. It'll automatically have adjusted everything except the VP, the VP you've just adjusted. So it's a custom cable type. So the cable type is manual. If I wanted to go back to my default cable type, choose this, go to Belden 59. And then we're back to the original VP, the original distance and the default settings here. Now then, to charge the unit, open the cover and apply the 12 volt AC or DC adapter 
to this socket and you'll see the LED lights to show that it's charging and on the display you'll see the usual sort of lightning strike um, charging icon and if we turn the power off there will be a display of the charge status whilst it's charging. If you'd like some more information about Tempo products please visit tempocom.com Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest information we provide.